What's going on boys, it's Clements back on mic and today what I've got for you guys is the best, well what I think are the best controller console settings to be using inside of Warzone as of Season 5, uh, Season 6 coming out soon, which we're like a week and a half away. So you can use it in Season 6 as well, I probably will make an update video to this because eventually I will be moving to the PS5 at the moment, I'm on Xbox One X, I was going to buy a PS5 at some point. Uh, this this coming month, but stock is just up and down. It's everywhere, um, and my computer actually broke about two weeks ago. So instead of buying uh, an upgraded console, which I will need next year, I've just gone ahead and bought something that I need immediately, which is a new computer. So I said I've always had laptops. I don't know why. I finally got my first proper computer, which is what I'm using right now to record and edit this video, and it's fantastic. Honestly, well, money well spent. Best money I've ever spent in my life. Um, so yeah, it's just making things a hell of a lot easier for YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, it's nothing special, it's just an office computer. All I need it for is browsing the web, um, video editing, stuff like that. So yeah, anyway, I'm bambling on. So let's just jump straight into the settings I got for you guys. This video was requested by a subscriber for quite some time now. So sorry it's taken so long, mate. I will probably put your name on screen somewhere. Um, I've just been sort of busy up and down, mental health, stuff like that. So. Yeah, let's jump straight in. Okay, so for the button layout, I'm using tactical. I use I used to use default until a friend of mine proposed that I try out tactical, and I've grown very accustomed to this layout. It's perfect for drop shotting because it switches your right analog stick from melee to crouching and sliding. Uh, now, some other alternatives that I recommend you could try out. One of which is bumper jumper. I know a lot of people use uh, bumper jumper. I don't know if you guys can hear me uh, scrolling through the menus, but. Uh, sorry if you can. Uh, so there's bumper jumper, there's bumper jumper tactical. So essentially, all uh, bumper jumper does the layout. Uh, it just switches your A or X button depending on what console you're on. Um, to tactical equipment, so it switches out your left bumper for the uh, A or X button. So the left bumper will obviously be then your jump and man mantle button. A lot of people might like this because it allows you to jump shot with ease. Um, however, the layout I think that is even better than bumper jumper is the one I just mentioned, uh, bumper jumper tactical. Uh, basically, this is the exact same as bumper jumper, the previous layout I've just showed you. Uh, the only difference being that this time it includes a tactical layout. Um, so, to make that make more sense, so the B or circle button is melee and your left analog is to crouch, sort of like tactical is. So, it includes tactical along with bumper jumper. So just try all three of these out, see what you like and what you don't like. Um, the stick layout I have is default. Uh, invert and vertical look I have disabled. I absolutely hate that. Hats off to anyone with that enabled and plays like that because it's it's crazy. Now we have dead zone. Now this is completely different for everyone. It's probably the most important setting uh, in the game to be honest. Um, so I have mine set at 0.10 but you might have to set yours to something different. So basically, this is what prevents your, your stick drift. So the higher the value, the more you will have to move your analog stick on your controller for a response in game. The lower, the more responsive your analog sticks will feel, which sounds all good until you notice that your character starts moving on its own and you're not able, you're not able to take your shots. Um, <clears throat> because of your sticks, they'll, they'll be drifting without input. So go into a game of plunder or something, find a quiet spot and try your dead zone out at... Um, around 0 0.3 maybe and just stand there and if you notice your character drift into the side then increase your dead zone values a bit uh, a bit more and and just rinse and repeat this process so you notice there's no more drift if you have a newer controller then there shouldn't be any stick drift to be honest um, if your controller is old and worn out a bit more then it'll probably require a bit a higher dead zone value I'm on Xbox unfortunately and Microsoft have actually forced, um, faced a lawsuit for stick drift so I'm in the shit um, apparently they purposely make controllers weaker. I'm not sure that I haven't really read much on it, but that's what I've heard. Um, so that's unlucky for me. But moving on, my sensitivity is set to 88. Um, I just found this is not too quick or slow. It's like my sweet spot. I think it's just right. 88. I've set up settings up to 14 sensitivity before. I played on. I played on settings as low as three before to maximise aim assist. And even though lower values increase your aim assist. You're really putting yourself at a disadvantage in 90% of your engagements as you as you aren't all that mobile and can't turn around for example if you're getting shot in the back. Sensitivity is pretty much personal preference, it's what you like to play on, um, like a lot of these settings it's personal preference but I think 8.8 is good. Uh, as for the multiplayers I have them as low, uh, as low zoom I have set to 0 0.85 and this is so my sensitivity slows down a bit once I ADS with guns like an AR, 
uh, SMG, allowing me to latch on and track enemies easier. Now, as for the high zoom, I have it keep. I've set it as the uh, default value at one. Uh, I tried lowering it on the high zoom, and I struggled to track enemies when looking through like a sniper scope or something, uh, or a four time scope on whatever weapon. Um, so I like it like this, but obviously do your own testing and see what works best for you. Okay, aim response curve type. I've tried all options that are available, and I have mine set to linear. Um, I like this one the most because I feel like I have more. It's the best option for me because I have more of a complete control of my aim. But if you're looking to have um, a bit more of a quote-unquote aim assist, want to latch onto enemies a bit easier, maybe go for dynamic or standard. Standard's probably the best, honestly. Um, so if you're not going to try out linear, just keep it as standard, I'd say. For the vibration, I have it set to enable just because, well, I like it and I feel more if immersed in my gunfights. I'm just used to it. So, But if you want to have it disabled, then that's fine. You're at no disadvantage whatsoever with that. Okay, so for the aim assist, I have mine set to standard, and I think that's what everyone pretty much has it as. Um, there was a point where precision was broken and would literally just stick to enemies. I saw gameplay of YouTubers and Jacob just testing it, and there was definitely something wrong with it. But that was soon fixed a long time ago, so obviously I would have said precision, but no, I like standard. Focusing, I think a lot more pros use, and I'm by no means a pro. Um, Focusing to my understanding is the weaker aim assist option, it essentially sticks to the centre of your enemy operator. Um, so if you're more accurate with your shots, you'll be able to utilise this the most, however if you're not so confident you might want to stick with standard uh, like me. Precision is uh, is similar to focusing on a slightly stronger. Uh, all these settings here are pretty much just left as standard as the default. Um, use reload use slash reload behavior okay so this is this is what you have to, you have to switch this to contextual tap this is a must have okay this allows you to loot much faster rather than having to hold to pick up an item you can just press x or square button depending on what console you're on and this this is just basically essential okay so another essential setting i recommend you guys change right now is the plate behavior a lot of people say this doesn't really matter but i feel like it does i recommend that you switch just to apply all um, so basically rather than holding my Y button until all three plates are applied, I prefer to just press it and just watch my operator do it himself. And if I'm in a gunfight and under pressure, I much prefer this because I can just quickly press the Y button again to cancel plating up or run to a safer place to continue plating. Or if I absolutely have to just jump straight back into the action. This setting also allows me to run around and slide cancel with ease rather than to keep my button held on the Y button. Um, I can just let go of the Y button um, should I need to stop plating, just press it. Or in most cases, just wait till all three plates are applied, then it'll just stop on its own. So yeah, I recommend that you guys uh, all of this setting to apply it all. Uh, slide behavior, you should have set to tap. This is what allows you to slide cancel, giving you more mobility and making you a harder target to hit. If you're not sure what slide cancel is, there's plenty of videos on YouTube explaining it. Um, or I might even make my own, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that video. Auto move forward and auto tactical sprint, I have this set to disabled just simply because I don't like it. I know a lot of people do. If you want to enable it and give it a try, then hats off. Uh, go ahead and do that, do your own testing, but I have it off. Uh, vehicle camera recenter, I find this just doesn't really matter, but I have it disabled just so when I'm looking around whilst driving, trying to maybe spot um, anyone that might engage on my vehicle, uh, it, just, it doesn't just randomly move my camera back to the center. Um, it's quite annoying. Um, auto parachute deploy I've disabled so I can pull my chute as close to the ground as, as I possibly can, allowing me to land and moving on contracts and loot boxes first. Um, moving on to brightness settings. Brightness settings are completely preference. Um, I mean, they should be calibrated correctly and uniquely to whatever display you're using. Uh, film grain, I have it set to zero. It looks ugly, get it off. <laughs> uh, tool tips really doesn't matter. If you're new to Warzone, then maybe just turn it on. Um, subtitles I've turned off to me it's just a distraction on screen colorblind time type is is once again a preference if you're actually colorblind then of course set it to which setting you need if not simply keep it off or try deuteranopia this just makes colors more vibrant basically or at least to someone who's not colorblind um, that's the effect it'll have on you and I don't know it just looks nice if you do have a, a colorblind setting enabled then target either world or both world and interface Motion blur I have disabled, it makes things just less visible when moving, um, whilst it might look pretty, it's pretty much a disadvantage. Minimap I have a square, it basically makes the map bigger in the corner, rather than having to pull up your, your full map every time you want to take a peek at something, like when you've got a UAV on. Um, 
I'm not sure why it's set as circle as default because it's pretty much a disadvantage once again. Minimap rotation I have on. Um, compass settings on Warzone I don't I don't find it matters too much whilst other games it does like like Fortnite and stuff like that. I'm honestly yet to hear anyone actually call out northwest or east during engagements. Um, but I have mine set to letters just for simplicity and it's easier to navigate and understand. So you know, and if by surprise your teammate does yell, for example, west, you can simply just find the giant W on your compass. Okay, so moving on to audio mix, I have mine set to home theatre. A lot of people have it as set to boost high or low, but I think that those mixes, whilst they might give you a slightly better hearing for footsteps, it makes the game audio sound horrible. Um, I hate it, so I like home theatre. It's the loudest mix out of all of them as well. It sounds great. Okay, so digging deeper into my audio settings, I have master volume as 100, obviously. Uh, music volume, I've turned all the way down. It's just a huge distraction. It's it's too loud. If you, for example, if you're in the final circle and your game's blasting out action music, you can't hear a fucking thing. So, yeah, no, turn music all the way off. You don't need it. Dialogue volume, I have set to 70. I still want to hear call outs from teammates if they're being shot or announcers announcing there's a UAV above. But I don't want it overpowering footsteps, you know what I'm saying? So I keep that at 70. Effects volume, 100. Juggernaut music, doesn't matter whatsoever. Hit marker sound effects, doesn't matter. Preference, classic or modern warfare. Uh, mono audio I have disabled. Okay, so that's all I've got for you guys today. They're, those are my settings that I use inside of Warzone every day, all day. Well, not all day, but uh, that, that's what I have used. So, yeah, I hope this guy's has helped you out if it did drop a like subscribe i hope this has answered and helped out the guy in the comments that kept requesting these settings um so yeah thanks for the uh for the suggestion of video and i hope i fulfilled so yeah see you guys in the next one if there is one peace out take care